Right now, ask yourself, how many games do you currently have that are halfway finished? Do you tell yourself, yeah, I'll get back to that, knowing fully well you won't, or even worse, games that you'd love? I... I think I have about five. I have Persona 5 that we're finishing. I currently have... I have Ninja Gaiden that I dropped because I already finished the primary... Uh, the... the uh, I already played uh, Ninja Gaiden Black, Ninja Gaiden Sigma, the first game, already when I was younger, so... I kind of know how it ends. I already finished Final Fantasy twelve several times. I never finished ten and ten two of Final Fantasy because of the uh, disc skipping, so I never got a chance to really finish it. But you know, it, it. But you know, you know. But you know. To play, but I've been gathering dust because you literally don't have the time to play them at all. A lot. Yeah, a lot. Hey, fellas, it's your friendly neighborhood circle guy, and today I want to jump into what I believe to be a massive contributor to the problem I just mentioned and spout my gaming opinion that absolutely nobody <laughs> asked for. Charles, bring me my soapbox. I don't think it is necessarily a good thing for every game to try to have hundreds of hours of gameplay. Huh. I, th not wrong, I, I do wish that there was more games that had shorter completion times because it, th there is a certain amount of serotonin when you complete a game, right? It's like people enjoying mangas. It's so much easier for me to read manga than to watch anime. And it's a, lo it's a large commitment. There's a hidden cost of a large commitment when it comes to playing like Baldur's Gate to uh, Diablo to Final Fantasy, and so forth. There's a lot of commitment, and you don't have that much time. That's why you want short spurts of content. Uh, okay, let me click. Quantity over quality. There's, there's a big issue Lately, I've seen yeah. this shift in mainstream gaming. This Hail Mary attempt at a forever game. Something with endless content. Something you could play. Live action. Live action has been the uh, pinnacle of current uh, gaming media because gaming is in a whole... It, you want to make it a lifestyle, right? So what what makes a lifestyle better than making a commitment? Hey, infinitely. And I'm not talking about games that can technically be played as long as you want. I'm specifically talking about games with an overabundance of scripted, achievable things. Quests, missions, moments, you know, that juicy content. Games like MMOs and certain RPGs aren't really new to this grind. I need you to slay 1,000 spiders for no reason whatsoever other than to increase playtime. Ooh, this is exciting. This is... Yeah, circle questing has been a, a large issue. Like, my friend, like, here, here's the situation, case in point. Mobile games are considered live action. However, my friend has sworn off of playing um, this mobile game because he doesn't find it commit uh, uh, something to commit to. I say otherwise. Because of the commitment to Final Fantasy VII, where the hooded figure in the recent trailer looks like a certain character in this mobile game. So, I think it's fun. It's also a... A collection. It's it's also gives me a chance to really collect clothes for certain people. So you know, it's it's it itches my back. It it scratches my itch. Otherwise, when it comes to other mobile games and like MMOs, uh, Destinies, your Overwatches, it's it's a toss up. Come with a vest and a name tag because I wasn't aware. I just clocked in my new place of fucking employment. Now, video game grinding has existed since the birth of at-home game consoles. Older games would increase the difficulty or remove checkpoints as a way to keep the player playing, mostly due to hardware limitations. When your cartridge mm -hmm. housed a few megabytes of storage, sometimes kilobytes, it was up to the developer on how to keep you tethered while simultaneously making sure you didn't blaze through the game. It was clever, often bullshit, but an understandable practice. This isn't necessarily what I'm getting at here, but it's the foundation of this fabricated playtime that I want to jump into. It matters knowing this, but being able to differentiate this somewhat necessary archaic version and the new abomination we'd later receive. But sure, I get it. We want our games to last a while. We never want fun experiences to end. Can you, like, a, a funny example is, like, the constant collaboration with certain games. Like, when Final Fantasy... Uh, no, when Monster Hunter collaborated with uh, The Witcher, when Monster Hunter collaborated with uh, Final Fantasy, those were ways to further keep you in the game to keep you cycling it's a way it's a tactic that works because but not only for people for the people within the community you love Final fan you love monster hunter but what if you can hunt the monsters in these games with monster hunter mechanics like the behemoth or the witcher's enemy which i don't know of but still
end. And on top of that, we also want some bang for our buck. Nothing feels worse than being hyped for a game for months just to have it last a few hours. But I got some issues with how every single goddamn game is expected to last forever now. Live service games, games drip feeding their players with season after season of updates, reuse content, weird time consuming systems where they don't need to be, crafting in literally fucking everything it seems. Quit it with the fucking crafting! Yeah, because like, there is a big issue with with Monster Hunter as I, as I brought up. It is a very fun game. I enjoy Monster Hunter. I have several hours of Monster Hunter. The problem is, with certain equipments that you want, you need to grind monsters almost to the bone because there are certain parts that you need to craft. And it's a very big issue where if you have four hours in a day just to play a game and you choose Monster Hunter, within that four hours, you can't guarantee the drop rate. Drop rates add-ons to the uh, long play time of certain games. It adds on to eating away at your time. Crafting takes up as much time as TikTok, as shorts, as reels do on your social media thing, where the main content is the monsters. Just like posts, just like videos, but all of a sudden, hey, here's a little thing because you need to you want this new weapon right that'll help you progress right you got to put in the time to craft these weapons to make yourself better and this isn't even the end of it. Even before updates and additional content post-launch, every game is expected to also release with enough content to keep you busy until you're fucking dead. Some of you may think, well, isn't it good to strive for more rather than to settle for less? And that would be the case if it weren't for the glaring fact that this current time-seeking content hellscape is lowering the quality of games across the board consistently. Not only do so many games try to promise this unobtainable content paradise, but nearly all of them fail when they do. Content gets rushed, recycled, or even cut and resold later on at an additional cost. A finished game filled with a ton of content and post-launch content on the way being developed during a spike in crunch culture is the single worst recipe an evil witch could brew up in her comically large evil cauldron. <laughs> one, of what the are we making, master? one of the one of the largest examples were was exactly that of Cyberpunk lately and No Man's Sky. They were on crunch time, they released an unfinished game and by the time that it was properly it, it was released so poorly that it took away time from you and the developers to fix a game, and you still had things to do in a broken game until it was properly finished. And that eats away at time. Time is a very valuable currency for a lot of people. Some people swore off of those games because, wait, you gave me a broken game and I spent $60? I will not trust you again. That takes away a customer. But then there's still other people who are dedicated to the company about, oh, it's okay, I forgive you. Quest. So, what exactly is content? Nowadays, games want to be a buffet of content, where not really much of it is that great, but oh wow, holy shit, there's so much here. They even got that weird-ass dumpling with old meat in it. Sometimes they'll even add to it and drip-feed paid content, like battle passes, and other times they'll have seasonal events meant to weaponize FOMO. I know this argument mm -hmm. has been made about DLC and pre-order expansion passes and stuff, but I think the real issue here has been brushed under the rug, and that's the fact that more games today are attempting to steal your attention forever, and almost no game can do that through quality. Far Cry 6, Dying Light 2, Ghostwire Tokyo, Horizon Forbidden West, Watch Dogs Legion, Days Gone, Outriders, Biomutant, Gotham Knights, basically every single Assassin's Creed game ever made, and especially Death Stranding. You know what all of these games- Yeah, Death Stranding has is one of the biggest vendors because all you're doing is essentially a walking simulator, and it took uh, Jacksepticeye hours in order to get to the proper, like, campaign uh, story points games have in common, the fact that if you remove half of the content, you'd only be improving the final product. If your game supposedly has a wealth of amazing things, I want to see them! Why would you hide them behind walls of garbage filler? And of course I don't expect every game- That example comes from Exo Primal because I would have loved to play every mech possible. I would love to find the uh, mech that I would really enjoy playing, but it was locked behind content that was locked behind story blades, and the only progression meter I had was, hey, you have these many PvP, PvE random missions in order to get to the next cutscene, which is not a defining moment. It's not a defining definition of like, hey, when do I get to play what I wanted to try? game to blow my mind every 10 milliseconds like a toddler with short-term memory loss that's not the issue and dude i understand online multiplayer and single-player games have vastly different expectations and common features but i'm conflating the two mostly because this issue is prevalent in both what i'm in getting at is yeah. one day i will yeah your time is worth something and in my 24 hours i need eight hours of it to sleep allegedly i need eight hours of it to allegedly work 
I need four hours or two hours of allegedly traveling. And by the time that happens, you almost have no more time to yourself. You have, case in point, if you have eight hours, you have six, after 16 hours of sleeping and working, you have the other eight hours to decide how much of that remaining eight hours is worth traveling, how much of that eight hours is worth being with family or eating or cooking. So time is valuable. And if you're, if you have a long commitment game that you're going to want to play, you have to make some sacrifices. You have to sacrifice sleep sometimes in order to play games. You can't sacrifice work because that helps with your rent. So it's a losing situation. We'll be dead. One day I will be cuddled up with the worms and moles of the world. But before that inevitable day comes, I will be enjoying video games as much as I can. And when I have to balance my work, social life, sleep, and other stuff with video games, that leaves me with an extremely small sliver of time for those games. And when I expand that inner sliver, you're going to see I don't have a lot of time to fuck around doing nothing in them. And that's coming from a dude where video games are a portion of my job. This is even worse for everyone else. There is so much fluff, filling, padding, and stuffing in modern video games. And the longer a game's average playtime gets, the more you're going to find it. Waiting to make something, forced long travel, backtracking, randomly imposed roadblocks that only exist to increase game length as a kid these things are awesome because you have all the time in the world but when yeah because you're game... a kid you have no responsibilities that they're that are the equivalents of your parents your responsibility is to be a kid your responsibility is to make mistakes and learn from them to like be a part of like the decision process and you're expanding on it that's your job as a kid not worrying about what grades will matter you do worry about school but beyond that you don't have any other responsibilities until you're forced to so for kids, that's great. But for the adults who want that moment of respite, your time is valuable. Game now for two hours and get almost nothing done? I feel like a damn stooge. Nowadays, someone will recommend me a game like, Yeah, it's pretty good. It's only about six hours long, but... What did you just say? It's about six, six hours. hours long. <laughs> you don't know how much I needed to hear that. What the hell is wrong with you? Because it's a goal that's actually attainable. Jumping back mm -hmm. to that backlog of unfinished games I previously mentioned in the intro, really think back to those games. How often were you actually immersed or engaged in the gameplay? How often were you experiencing something new or innovative? Or did you maybe abandon the game due to its overabundance of slog and you never even got to the good advertised stuff whatsoever? You see, right there. That is the issue here. It's mm -hmm. not expanding the playability, it's restricting it. <laughs> As I get older, I realize games that have 10 hours of excellent content will almost always be better than games with 30 hours of excellent content and 70 hours of fucking padding. But that was one of the, the conversations that I had of like, whether or not I do want to finish uh, Persona 5. Persona 5 is a commitment to like 80 hours sometimes, or 90, depending on how you play the game. Or if you spend the time to really do your research or your homework and... It was it was a hard decision. Sometimes it was a hard decision for me to really decide, hey, do I really want to spend time in this game? Yes, how badly, pretty badly, because I enjoy the world of Final F of Persona Five, and it comes to a point to where I had to force myself to to listen to a video about the the um, the campaign because I was so impatient to wanting to know how it ends, and for me, I like knowing that it ends because that. That eases the pain of my 80-hour content for me. However, some people may not play that way, and that's going to be an issue. I want to play as much Elder Ring as possible. I want to play as much Final Fantasy as possible, but with the limited time, six hours is something I can hopefully achieve in like two streams or something like that. Deathloop it has 100 hours of content. Isn't that outstanding? Deathloop is a great example of a game with backtracking, but simultaneously staying fresh, short, interesting, and concise with its gameplay. Hopping on for an hour and finishing five extremely varied fun missions before putting down the controller feels a whole lot better than starting up a mission to listen to a dude talk for 48 minutes while I slowly follow him to a destination to retrieve something stupid and walk all the way back. And listen, I'm not saying RPGs or farming games that go on for billions of hours shouldn't exist. I mean, Christ, I love RPGs, obviously. They have their place just as much as short indie experiences do. But my problem is this massive middle blob of games that want to be anything and everything and the succeed one in between. nothing yeah, while simultaneously being just, I don't know, boring. It seems so many games don't know what they want to be anymore. Video game genres as a whole seem to be losing their identity. Ah, yes, my first person shooter racing farming sim. This game should have RPG elements and base building. Thank God I added multiplayer. You're going to want to pre-order for early access to the V12 eggplant shotgun. There's never enough time to do everything you want. Because we live on a crunch time because, yeah, definitely because you have to be a functioning member of society, right? You have to be a functioning member of the family. But when the game forces you in a way to like say, hey, you will never finish this game if you only commit 20, uh, two hours, four hours a day. You have to commit six hours or your, and your 
sleep in order to complete this game. That's a problem for people who don't have that time. Which, in hindsight, that's why the lovely magic of portable games becomes an option. To where you can technically enjoy your time as a gamer if you portable game it. Like the Steam Deck. Like the PlayStation Portable, if you have internet. Like... Anything that you can bring with you on your, like, person because you can travel or you can go to the gym while you game and that's a service for you. However, that's also a trade-off. You're not fully committed to the commute or you're not fully committed to the exercise. I'm fortunate that all I'm doing at work is walking during my breaks to further, like, advance my progress in the game. But that sometimes takes away my chances to lay down or to eat and I have to plan for that. That's more time out of my eight hours to plan like how do I do that? The industry is curving in a way where it's becoming far more acceptable to release a game half baked with the promise of fixing it or improving yeah, it. Yes, Saint Rose um Saint Rose released an incomplete game but like they think they did a really good job. The story premise was terrible. If later on than to delay or take your time crafting a polished work of art. Ah, back in the day, we didn't get updates, patches, and performance updates. Outside of the occasional international release changes, you had to make sure whatever was on that disc or cartridge was worthy of its price tag. And often it wasn't, in fairness. But this yeah. rush games out the door, time crunching development hell world we live in was partially forged in the same crucible that invented the notion that every game must last forever. You know, it actually made me happy to hear when God of War Ragnarok got delayed. Most of the time, delays are positive. Waiting for a refined product will always be better than getting an underdeveloped mess quicker. Ugh, but gamers suck. Gamers are Seriously, my least favorite group of people, and I should know, I'm sadly one of them. No matter what you try to do, they'll never be happy. Oh boy, which route developer released the game? Because like, that's like one of the big issues too, especially when it came to Diablo Immortal, because Diablo Immortal almost looked like the same kind of gameplay you see before, like in the past Diablo 2, 3, 1, but microtransactions like added on to the longer play times, and in the case in point of, of um, Lord Minion 777, he scheduled his vacation around his game. It, for as much time as you want to invest in a hobby like gaming, you have to consider how much of it actually impedes proper living. And that's a problem with modern gaming. Modern gaming just has that problem too, where in Diablo 4, when they released it, it almost devolved its own game to be appropriate for the casual players but by making it more approachable for casual players it pushed away hardcore fans and you can never really toe the line correctly Aim too soon and get shit on or delay a game and still get shit on the choice is yours my friend Speaking of crunch, while writing this video, me and my friends made the extremely poor decision of firing up Anthem. Remember that travesty? It's on Game Pass anyway, and we did this on the condition that we'd only check out the mainline content, none of the grindy, worthless crap. Because yeah, mech suits that fly around controlling the fucking weather is pretty badass. And you know what we learned? The art design is breathtaking. The sound design it's is so superb. great. The game plays and feels amazing. Everything is snappy and crisp. Just flying around is enjoyable. But you know what isn't enjoyable? The fact that this game went through development hell trying. Anthem was in development before Destiny came out, but that didn't mean it was an influence. Anthem desires to unravels future further. ...to be a Destiny killer by adding grindy, unintuited, stupid systems that uproot you from the actual fun moments just to shove some UI disaster or worthless dialogue in your face. Anytime you're caught red-handed having fun, the game forces you to stop everything you're doing so you can go not have fun. <laughs> Thank God, fellas, I forgot... <laughs> Oh no, that was terrible because Anthem looked so good if it weren't for all like the nitpicking things. Like, hey, by the way, distract. Here's a do this to distract yourself from the actual point of playing the game. You play the game because being an Iron Man that can control the weather is really cool, but the amount of dialogue and the amount of side missions take you away from doing that. These games are supposed to make me miserable. What? These types of games hold the concept of end game content over your head as if you have to sift through the garbage to make it to the real game. But guess what, dipshit? I didn't make it to the end game content because the base game fucking sucked. Anthem could have been an extremely fun 8 to 10 hour co-op action game, but we just couldn't have that because Bioware was apparently visited by three ghosts that night. The ghost of a worthless open world, the ghost of repetitive missions, <laughs> and the ghost of tedious, stupid crafting. <sighs> What matters really at the bad. end of all of this is that we all need to unanimously push for 
in the way this segment hopefully package. ties a bow okay. around the point I'm making, the vision of every game also needs to find its little bow. <laughs> oh, look at him go. Oh, whoa, shit. I firmly believe aimless single player checklist games are some of the worst games ever made. They don't respect your time, they don't strive for anything meaningful, they're a job with no pay and a boss that demands too much of you. These forever endlessly supported multi. Yeah, because, like, it, it's. Final Fan, uh, Persona 5 is definitely an example of, like, you have to understand that they made socializing with people such an integral part. Like, by all means, by separating the time you're playing as a um, RPG and fighting shadows, the time the time between you playing fighting as shadows to being an actual human is far and few, depending on how much time you invest in the social links, affects how much time how much of a better time you have as a persona user. The reason why that works is because there is such a dense story of being a high schooler that it's forgiving that the time from being a persona user to persona user is far in between. You technically have months. It's like it's like the uh, enemy of the week where there's a lot of fluff in between boss boss uh, centric like uh, checkpoints that it makes it worth it. But there are other games that don't understand that player games would always rather drag a carrot on a stick than actually make worthwhile gameplay features. There is a wealth of outstanding AAA and indie games that don't fall into this massive, all-consuming category that I challenge you to seek out and enjoy. Here's an extremely varied list of games that properly appreciate your time, that you can utilize as medicine whenever you feel yourself falling into these traps. Now Deathloop, Disco Elysium, Earth Defense Force, I've, I've played Prey. Um... Grow home. I've definitely played at least one of them. At least I have at least played Prey. I know about Earth Defense Force. Um, yeah. Now listen, I know this list is psychotic, unorganized, and truly deranged, but I think these games perfectly emphasize what I'm talking about. All of these games are super fun, and they're consistently fun and diversely engaging the whole time despite being extremely different from one another. And just as a wise man once said, if the game's not fun, why bother? Oh shit. Uh well that he made a really good point. And uh the circle tune is correct. There's a big problem with how the games are being made nowadays, but you gotta really figure out where you wanna go with it. Um Well yeah, it's it's really tough. It's tough to really understand like, hey, do I really want to commit myself to this game? And oftentimes when you commit your lifetime to Final Fantasy or you commit your lifestyle to Bethesda, or you commit yourself to one developer, it's based on your initial interaction as a child, where there are people right now playing Pokemon because they've been playing Pokemon all the time since they were like five. I had a situation where I actually got off the train, and I only played uh, Pokemon again because my brother gave it to me. So he plays Pokemon on a regular basis. If not, he plays a live action service game of Maple Story. It it really depends on your trade off. You want to trade off um, easy, easily attainable uh, serotonin, or you want to look for the next itch that is short to let you move on to other types of content. Who knows? Hard to say. Uh, what do you think? Uh, let me know down below. And that's the video. Okay. Bye bye.